being recorded. Uh, we usually like to uh, provide you with the recording so you can share them with colleagues um, after the presentation. A bit about Corellis. Uh, we are located in Cerritos, California. Uh, we were founded in 1991, so we've been around uh, for just over 30 years. Uh, we were acquired by Electronic Warfare Associates in 2006. Uh, we are essentially independent. Uh, we work with EWA on some projects, but otherwise uh, we work on commercial projects, whereas they tend to take on uh, more contracts. Uh, this does mean that we have uh, a core business that um, we are not just uh, military aerospace, but we also work with all sorts of commercial companies um, as well. Uh, we develop products around IEEE 1149.1 .1 standard. Uh, that includes not just .1, but the standards related to it. For example, 1149.6 uses uh, high-speed transceivers, uh, or really lets us test high-speed transceiver nets um, at low speed. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today are kind of some interesting ways of using the 1149.1 standard outside of boundary scan. If you're familiar with Corellis, our main product line is JTAG boundary scan. Uh, and today we're going to talk about some of the uh, different applications of using that JTAG port for other uses. Uh, we do a lot of uh, in-system programming in, as well. Uh, we have a line of bus analyzers. If you have I2C or SPY buses, uh, we also have some analyzer and exerciser products for those. And of course, we have engineering services. We do test procedure development uh, using our own product for you if you need it, and support and training. So I run these webinars. Uh, we do a webinar uh, every other month, and we do a training class every other month. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for our training, uh, that should be going up soon after this. Um, and if you are interested in more in-depth training uh, and personalized, we also can do on-site training. So just a bit about our customers. Uh, we've worked with uh, many customers across many different industries. In general, if you're building embedded systems, uh, you can take advantage of uh, JTAG to provide extra tests for uh, whatever your needs are. It's somewhere in between, usually. Um, structural tests, your in-circuit tester, um, AOI, AXI, and your functional test, uh, meaning loading up an operating system and running. We're going to talk about what we can do kind of in between there. So we'll still be running at bare metal uh, without an operating system, but we're going to take advantage of some of the things we can do with a processor. Our overall test system is called Scan Express. Uh, today, again, we're going to be focusing specifically on the JET component of that, uh, but it does integrate with our other software. For example, you can run Boundary Scan and JET together. To take advantage of this, we need a JTAG controller. Um, and a bit of an aside here, we do have an introduction to JTAG and Boundary Scan webinar. Uh, there are recordings available. Um, if this is new to you, um, I do recommend that you check that one out where I will talk a bit more about the requirements for getting this up and running. Uh, but you do need a hardware interface. We need something to interface with our embedded system. Uh, we provide JTAG controllers for that, depending on your use case. Maybe you need uh, multiple taps. We have up to eight taps on our modern controllers. Uh, maybe you need different interfaces. If you want to in integrate into a Teradyne tester or you want to integrate into a PXI system or PXIE, we have options for that as well. And that leads us to ScanExpress JET. So JET stands for JTAG Embedded Test. Uh, our system has a functional test generator where we will create tests for you. Uh, we have a script debugger for developing your own scripts and debugging those scripts. There will be a test execution console and we can do high-speed in-system flash programming. Uh, as we see in this diagram here, an uh, embedded system is quite often composed of a micro uh, a microprocessor, uh, that could be a microprocessor, microcontroller, something with a CPU core that has a debug port functionality. We can take advantage of that to communicate with peripherals on the board. Um, in this case, we're listing USB, PCI. Uh, we can do loopback tests on those. We can write to I2C and SPI devices. Uh, so for example, if you have a DAC in ADC, you could do a loopback test there, write to the DAC, generate an analog uh, voltage, and then read that analog voltage back in and compare. In addition to that, we can do um, in-system programming. Often that is one of the main applications that customers are looking for and memory test. So using the processor, 
uh, we can do all those things I just described uh, on peripherals that are connected to the CPU. Uh, we will essentially initialize the CPU, initialize devices connected to the CPU, run tests on those, and give a result. Uh, we can do bus discovery as well. So, for example, one thing we might do, um, especially if it's a, uh, you know, we're a li little bit limited on uh, development, we can run a bus discovery test. We can take a look at what's on the I squared C bus and report which devices act uh, at their address. All of this is done at speed. Uh, so if you are familiar with boundary scan test and uh, in-circuit test in general, uh, it tends to run slowly. Uh, in boundary scan test, we are going to be operating a shift register in the tens of megahertz, uh, which means our effective switching rate is very low. However, with JET, we are going to run the CPU at its native speed. Um, I'll probably talk a little bit about what I mean there uh, as we come up. Um, I want to make sure I don't jump into it a little bit too early. Uh, but we can test boards at speed, meaning defects that only occur at speed. If you have some problem with your board that only occurs when you run it at full speed, um, the common case there, I'll have a picture, I believe, uh, coming up of something like a head and pillow defect uh, where you do have continuity. Uh, but when you run that signal at full speed, there's not enough metal uh, making contact there uh, for your signal to propagate properly. Uh, you run into problems, your memory test fails. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we are looking for when you run these at speed tests. And we can program flash memory at full speed. We're just going to have the CPU do it for us, uh, meaning that CPU can run as fast as that CPU can run. So we're going to use a CPU to assist us with all of this. Uh, we are going to download and run test routines using that CPU. Uh, we often try to use cache whenever it's available to us. If we run a test from cache rather than um, the main memory array, uh, that means we can test the full memory array without worrying about our code being stored there. With in-system programming, we can get up to theoretical speeds. There's going to be some overhead where we have to load a flash programming application onto that processor, but we keep that very small so that the time uh, to program flash can reach theoretical maximum speeds. And we've uh, supported a lot of different processors. We have a large library of processors. Uh, of course, we focus uh, on ARM core um, for companies that are uh, still developing or uh, testing older systems. We have PowerPC, uh, as well as some other um, uh, families. For example, we do with some MIPS processors as well. With the Scan Express Jet software, uh, you can generate functional tests for common peripherals. The most common peripheral is RAM uh, and flash. So we can usually automatically, as part of the package, generate tests for any RAM device connected to your CPU. Uh, and then flash, as long as it's parallel NOR flash, some of the, the other flash devices have um, different interfaces, but parallel NOR flash, in general, we can test uh, without any additional development beyond our initial package. Our language, it's a C style uh, script language. The script essentially provides um, communication between your JTAG port, so that hardware that we saw before, um, our hardware controller is gonna be connected to, for example, a computer. The host computer sends the, the um, hardware controller through the scripting language uh, information about what to do. It's gonna say, uh, write to register somewhere. It's going to say, load code to somewhere in uh, CPU's memory space. And it's going to tell the CPU to do things like run code here, halt, uh, read register, give me result from register. And I'll go into a bit more detail um, in some upcoming slides. If you want to integrate this into other products, uh, we have an API. In general, we recommend if you're going to uh, be sequencing your tests, you can use our Scan Express Runner API that can call boundary scan tests as well as Scan Express Jet uh, tests. Uh, but we also have a native API for the Jet application. My slide uh, there, okay. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about some benefits of this system. Uh, I mentioned the word bare metal earlier. At least I think I did uh, when I was talking about how this kind of lives somewhere between what we generally consider structural test and functional test. Uh, Scan Express Jet runs at bare metal. There's no operating system required. Uh, we are going to initialize the processor directly. Uh, we can do things like we can load uh, U-boot using Scan Express Jet by programming it into Flash, 
and then having the system boot into that, uh, but we don't need it. We initialize the processor directly, and then we communicate with the processor peripherals uh, with essentially uh, our own driver systems. Uh, it takes minimal footprint. Uh, you just need a JTAG controller, a host PC of some sort, uh, and then a connection to your board on its JTAG port. Uh, and once we have that, we can run these tests. Uh, we are testing components in real time. We are going to run that CPU as fast as we can so that we can test those peripherals at their native speed. This is often used to either replace uh, some portions of um, structural test in circuit test equipment uh, or supplement it. Uh, one example that I know of that we have a customer um, who I think may have uh, also registered for this, I may have seen someone there. Uh, you can use this system to uh, load functional tests after, for example, let's say I do my smoke test, I make sure that my product is not going to burn itself up when I power it on. Uh, I run boundary scan tests, which is a I can do it at a benchtop or desktop level uh, to get a feel for uh, if I have any interconnect faults. Uh, and I can do this on prototypes very easily. I don't need to make a fixture. And then I can run Scan Express Jet for some basic functional tests. That Jet sequence can also load uh, a bootloader afterward. And then that bootloader can take over and then load my eventual OS. And my OS can run software level tests after that. There's an advantage to not having the operating system where if you think about it, an operating system running on an embedded system is going to abstract you away from the hardware. If your concern is an issue with your hardware, uh, it's so much better to run a bare metal test because we have direct access to things. Uh, we can tell you information about memory pins, for example. If you combine this with boundary scan, uh, we can get really great coverage. We can get our structural coverage from boundary scan, and then we get our functional coverage from Scan Express Jet. They complement each other. Uh, in this diagram, we are showing your processor cores. Uh, Scan Express Jet can take advantage of those processor cores, test peripherals. Um, often we're looking at loopback type tests, but of course you could have um, external instruments that will sample a value that is essentially generated. Uh, for example, in the DAC and ADC loopback that we see here, uh, there's no reason that that SPI interface uh, could not be used to generate an analog voltage and have a multimeter uh, that either you have an operator uh, using or that is uh, software controlled, take a measurement for you. All of this can be integrated with our Scan Express runner software. So if you are familiar with Corellis and you're already using Scan Express for boundary scan tests, you can add this to your boundary scan tests. And it's all in one application, the Scan Express TPG application, if you're familiar with our test pattern generator, and the Scan Express Jet application are integrated into one piece of software. All right, so now that we've been through that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a short break and we're going to launch a poll. Uh, so this is going to ask you if you would like to have somebody follow up with you uh, and <clears throat> uh, they can personalize a demo for you uh, based on your questions, your hardware, uh, whatever it is you're looking for. So I'll leave that up for a few more seconds and then we'll proceed with the next part. Again, for those who uh, may have come in late, uh, the questions interface can be used to ask any questions that you have. Uh, so you can go ahead and type those in. Uh, you can either type them in as I'm going along or if you'd prefer, you can wait till the end when we have the Q&A session. I'll close that poll and we will continue. The <clears throat> Scan Express Jet, just like Boundary Scan, um, because we don't need to build expensive fixtures, we don't need a ton of, um, of I think the what I'm looking at is um, fixed cost. We can just take, for example, um, I don't have it really, I'm not sure you can see it on my camera, uh, but we can take a uh, you know, handheld JTAG controller, connect it to a board. You might be able to see over my left shoulder uh, one of our demo boards. And we can very easily hook those things up and run tests. This means that during hardware debug, I get a prototype back from the field. I can run this on that prototype, determine that that prototype may have a problem with its interfaces. 
Uh, and that's, of course, one of the killer applications here as well is you get a hardware board, um, you try to load the operating system, it doesn't work. Um, maybe your bootloader is still in development, uh, so you're not quite sure if that's working, but you also don't know if you, sh you should blame the hardware, you're not, not really sure where to look. Um, Scan Express Jet can be a good um, other, other source of information. It'll tell you, uh, we think the hardware is good based on these tests that we ran that are completely independent of any software that you're writing for your product. As you go along, integration and test and production, uh, these tests can be run in uh, production environments. They are meant to be run in production environments. We have JTAG controllers that are meant for harsh pr uh, production environments. And then maintenance and service. Uh, if you wanted, again, we have handheld JTAG controllers. You could have them with a laptop uh, so that you can do field service. Or as things come back, maybe for depot repair, you can use this as part of your process there as well. There are some requirements to get this going. Uh, we need first a CPU. Everything that I've said so far, we are testing embedded systems by taking control of a CPU. Uh, we need to have supported that CPU. Unfortunately, there's not one standard for CPU debug ports. Uh, there are, in general, if we support ARM, uh, that is portable to other ARM parts. For example, most Cortex-A's are gonna be pretty much the same. Uh, but there are differences in how, for example, Texas Instruments would implement it compared to NXP. So there are some differences. We do need to support those individually. Uh, the scan chain order tells us for if you have multiple devices in a JTAG chain, again, if, if I'm saying things here like JTAG chain uh, that are unfamiliar to you, that's okay. Um, I, again, I do recommend you check out our intro. Uh, but essentially, these devices can be daisy chained. So you may have uh, multiple CPUs in a chain, or you may have a CPU with other devices. We need to know what is in that chain. Uh, we need the instruction register length. Uh, that tells us <clears throat> uh, how to communicate with that device, how to give it opcodes in its instruction register. Uh, we need the TAP interface. Somebody needs to have designed into the embedded system a way to get access to its JTAG pins. Uh, we need a JTAG controller. That's a, a piece of hardware from Corellis. And then we need the test software, the Scan Express test, uh, JET test software. Uh, what types of devices? Most modern processors will have a JTAG interface. Uh, some microcontrollers may have um, something um, instead of JTAG, or they may implement JTAG and some other interface, like um, there's spy by wire or um, SWD, a serial wire debug for ARM chips, we, are use, we need the JTAG interface. Uh, that's what we use to communicate with these devices. Uh, so modern processors tend to have this JTAG interface for debug. We can take advantage of that to control these devices. Uh, what we see here, the, the examples we have, um, uh, Xilinx Zinc has ARM cores in it. We can take advantage of that in both the 7000, uh, Zinc 7000 series as well as the UltraScale. Uh, we've done a lot of Texas Instruments uh, ARM-based processors, such as the uh, quite popular AM335X. Uh, we work with NVIDIA to do Tegra support as well. And I think I may have a slide coming up uh, in the future where I will uh, talk a bit about <clears throat> some of the uh, processors that we support. We need to know the testable devices. Uh, these are generally going to be devices in the CPU memory map. Uh, often. If we are doing development for this to support a processor, we have to get RAM working. So RAM tests are going to be part of it. Uh, if RAM doesn't work, we usually can't get that CPU running in the first place. Uh, flash tests and in-system programming. Uh, UART, Ethernet, Mac, uh, A to D and D to A. Uh, other buses such as PCI and PCIe. Uh, Newer technologies. So as things come out, uh, we should be able to support them. Uh, we've done tests for DDR4 and 5. Uh, EMMC, we've uh, done some in-system programming for EMMC devices. So that's NAND flash uh, with an extra control interface. Uh, we've done some CERTES tests. Uh, you may also be able to, even if you don't have a processor in your uh, device to start with, if you don't have a processor core, we might also be able to control a soft core. Uh, we've done, for example, uh, it's, it's a bit old now, but the Vertex 2 Pro had a PowerPC core 
uh, integrated into it. Uh, so we were able to use that to run a bit error rate test uh, on its high-speed transceivers, uh, the Rocket I.O. transceivers. Some supported processor manufacturers. These are all processor uh, manufacturers we've worked with uh, to support their devices. Uh, AMMC, their PowerPC uh, chips, for example, NXP, I.MX, as well as uh, Core IQ series. Uh, we've done quite a few of those. Uh, Texas Instruments, their ARM-based processors, such as uh, AM and DM series. Uh, recently, we've done some automotive work with uh, NVIDIA, and I don't think I have it on here, um, but we've also done some, I believe, some Oryx support and uh, Renaissance uh, RCAR. So depending on uh, your needs, if we don't have your processor already, uh, you can go ahead and ask, uh, for example, your sales representative, uh, and they'll run it down for you, figure out uh, sometimes it's similar to something we've already done. Implementing support is uh, very little engineering. Other times it may be a brand new core to us, uh, and it may uh, take some time to develop that. Let's uh, talk a little bit about user interface, how you can, how if you have this Scan Express Jet software, how you interface with it, what you can do with it. Uh, first of all, we can create, edit, and debug test scripts. If you're familiar with our boundary scan test script, it shares a language with that. In fact, if you're uh, familiar with our I squared C exerciser software as well, same scripting language. Uh, it's a C style command file script language. It gives you C like functions uh, without worrying about um, managing memory. So, for example, there's no such thing as a pointer, uh, but the syntax will look very much like C. Uh, and we will have some C style functions like printf available to you as, uh, for uh, communicating with uh, your operator, essentially writing to diagnostics. Uh, the debugger allows you to step through code. Uh, so you can you know, halt a uh, single step. You can set breakpoints. You can watch variables. Uh, we use this to load and control our embedded test programs. Uh, when I say that, what, what we're saying is the scripting language has, for example, a function called load. Uh, that function allows us to load code into the CPU's memory space and then tell the CPU run that code. Uh, so using this scripting language, the basic approach is we'll have some embedded code ready to go. Uh, we will have some configuration that we can do with that by writing to registers and things. But that code is going to get loaded into the embedded system. So you're going to download to your board. Uh, we're going to tell that CPU run the code. We're going to tell it where to where to find that code at the program, uh, where to set its program counter. Uh, we're going to tell it run that code. We're going to let it run for a bit. We're going to halt the processor. We're going to have that processor read a register, which we had that processor store result in. Uh, if that result says we're done, then we end the test. We read out the results and print those. Otherwise, we run the processor again until when we pull the next time. Uh, maybe the processor is done. I think you're actually going to see some of that in uh, the example script I'm going to have coming up. Uh, and the command console is uh, unique to this. If you're again, if you're familiar with our scripting language and Scan Express TPG, uh, the command console is something that you don't have there. You have an output console in Scan Express TPG, but in Jet we will have a command console where you can actually type in commands uh, for the debugger. So here's a screenshot, uh, and in this little bit of code, in fact, let me pull up my laser pointer and let's take a look at uh, what it's doing. Uh, we tell the processor to run, that's up here. We set a delay before we're gonna do our status check, uh, and then we go into a polling loop. We say while not done, halt the processor, read the status register, uh, read the address, re address register, if status tells us that it's still running, uh, update the progress bar and then run again and then go back to the uh, status loop. So that, for example, is one way to uh, interface with the embedded code that's running on the system. Uh, you can also see down in the command window, uh, as the person operating the software, you can also, uh, either for debugging or for helping develop a script, uh, you can type in commands, for example, read the program counter register to see where you're at, uh, or you can read 
uh, registers and memory. Some of the example functions, uh, reset, resets the board. Uh, there's a couple different resets that we can run. There's the JTAG TMS reset, where we uh, reset the JTAG state machine. Uh, you can reset the core, and sometimes you may have a system reset as well. Give me just one second. That's not moving. There we go. Uh, we have over 100 predefined functions available to you. So chances are you can find something. Um, if, you, if we don't have it, you can always ask us, um, and we can see if we can implement it for you. Uh, but in general, we'll reset. You can halt the processor, run the processor. You can step uh, through code that that processor is running. You can get status of that processor. Uh, you can send commands to the board. Uh, you can do just general JTAG scans. And for example, let's say that uh, I need to initialize something uh, I think the common one is the Texas Instruments ice pick. If I need to initialize something prior to uh, running my test, I can send an instruction for that processor to execute. And that'll take us to JET use cases. So I mentioned something earlier um, when we were talking about what would you use this for? And that was the concept of the head and pillow defect. Uh, if you have a cold solder joint, uh, it can cause problems, not just where we'd find an open or short defect, uh, but it may be making enough contact that we don't detect an open or short at structural test. Your ICT system doesn't pick it up, your um, AOI system doesn't pick it up, your boundary scan tests don't pick it up because none of them are operating the system functionally. It's only when you actually go to run the system and then a clock signal, for example, tries to propagate from this ball uh, to the board, through the pad, uh, then you have trouble because you have very poor signal. Uh, maybe it's double clocking. You just have um, ringing like crazy uh, because you just don't have the conductivity that you need. Uh, that's what we're looking for here. The, we can find faults that you can't find otherwise. Uh, if you operate the system at speed, it allows us to detect and diagnose these defects. Uh, if you just run structural tests, they could be a defect escape. Um, our assumption is you're probably going to run some amount of functional test of your product, uh, but this also allows you to move some of that functional test um, <clears throat> up the line. So instead of having to wait until I've loaded my bootloader and I've got an operating system running, I can run a memory test that is going to run at speed. It's going to look for at speed type defects. I can run that memory test uh, at bare metal, uh, essentially immediately after smoke test, if I wanted to. Our common um, sequence would be smoke test, structural test. Um, ideally, um, even before that, we do a powered off structural test, and then a smoke test, powered on structural test, powered on uh, basic functional test using JET, and then load your software and you run your final functional tests so that we make sure that product is what we thought it would be. Uh, we can improve flash programming speeds. So we, uh, this is actually a project that we did a while back um, where a customer was looking for improved programming speeds. They were actually doing it over USB, uh, found it very inefficient. Uh, so their tests were, <clears throat> or sorry, their in-system programming was taking a long time. Uh, we were able to get it uh, down to much lower speeds. Sorry, much faster speeds, much lower time. So it had one uh, meg of internal flash, five megs of spy nor flash attached, uh, and 256K RAM. Uh, what that also means is as you're trying to program that flash, you have to break everything into chunks, right? You don't have enough RAM to hold a, an entire flash image so that your CPU can write it. Uh, so we used our JET techniques using embedded code running on the processor uh, to break that into chunks. So our script would uh, break the data file into chunks, uh, load it into memory, have that CPU write each bit of memory, uh, each chunk of flash uh, in sequence. And we were able to get their programming time down below 30 seconds from what was taking 2.5 minutes. Um, and their original process was over the USB interface. Uh, and what you may find 
is um, especially I believe when you have software stacks running and everything, uh, just because USB offers 480, uh, I believe it's 480 megabits per second for USB 2, um, you don't always get that efficiency uh, that you might need uh, until your system's operating uh, fully. So we can take advantage of the CPU, have it do this for us. Uh, in aerospace and defense, uh, often everybody's looking to uh, test to as much extent as possible. Um, one of our one of the use cases I know of, uh, I can't talk too detailed about it, uh, but we had an uh, I believe they were working on an aerospace project, um, and the customer purchased Scan Express Jet for their CPU. Um, and not only did they use the tests that we provided, uh, but they created a lot of their own tests. They used their own embedded code, they loaded it onto the system, and then they used Scan Express Jet to control it. Uh, this allows you to get, again, additional test coverage at a bare metal level. Uh, so instead of having to load a, <clears throat> uh, load a bootloader and operating system to get tests up and running, uh, this can run at an earlier stage. Uh, it can also uh, be useful for meeting um, safety requirements. So functional safety type requirements, uh, you may be able to use this to help out with meeting those. Um, I do know that our defense and aerospace customers, it's very common um, when they are testing a board to have different loads. Uh, so for example, a board comes in, they load the FPGA with something else, they load something that's non-production code, they load the um, CPU with non-production code, um, JET can, for example, be used to help with um, loading that non-production code and running essentially it uh, tests um, on a system, then loading your production code afterwards. So to, to back up on that, what I'm saying here is uh, JET can be used, for example, I get a, a unit back from the field. Um, I'm going to reprogram the, the memory. I'm going to use in-system in programming using Scan Express JET to reprogram the flash with something that tells that CPU how to run some other tests. Then when I'm done with that, I've run my tests, I've said that the, this unit seems to be good, I reload the production firmware at the end using JET in-system programming, that product is now ready to go. And uh, so we keep, I have used this word so many times uh, throughout this presentation, JET, JTAG Embedded Test. Um, JET is used to test JETs. We have customers who are using this on some of their avionics systems. For the automotive industry, um, this has been growing a lot over the past couple of years especially. Um, every automobile is becoming computerized more and more. Uh, so the automobile has a bunch of ECUs that each have its own processor. Uh, we've had automotive customers who come to us looking for tests for that, um, and we've supported their processors, and we can run tests on their ECUs. Uh, so some examples, uh, driver cockpit display. We had, uh, it was kind of really interesting. We had a board here, uh, actually a full system, um, including the screen. Uh, it was really fun to see once we uh, got everything working in system programming, and then watch that uh, the cockpit come up and all the, the instruments in the cluster um, we're all virtual, but it was pretty cool to see. Uh, so your ECUs are generally going to have a microcontroller, um, and more and more we, we are seeing complex microcontrollers, so ARM Cortex-Ms and equivalent. Uh, with additional peripherals connected, uh, we can use JET to help test those. Uh, if you have front and uh, rear and side camera systems, uh, you can use this for that. Uh, autonomous vehicles are going to have plenty of computing in them. Uh, and we can take advantage of uh, our ability to control the processor to test peripherals in those computing systems. And this can be used to help with uh, the ISO 262 or uh, 26262 uh, automotive functional safety uh, standard. So we've had customers who are using Scan Express Jet to help supplement their tests to meet uh, functional safety requirements for testing out their products prior to putting it in an automobile. Uh, and going back to that front, rear, and side cameras, um, one of the things I haven't focused too much on is the fact that uh, we can use just like, for example, a ribbon cable to connect to the board. Um, we don't need anything really big. <clears throat> uh, and one of our customers, um, they actually make uh, cameras for inside the vehicle, 
and they were telling me that um, one of the problems with their products is it keeps getting smaller. Every year um, they have to come up with something smaller that does the same or more than the previous one, uh, which means they just can't uh, put test points on it anymore. Uh, the, the great thing about JET is all we need are five signals, four if it doesn't need the test reset, uh, to get access to those systems so it doesn't take a lot of test points. Uh, you can often save on test points by using boundary scan and JET, really just general JTAG techniques for testing your boards. Some other industries to think about, um, and some of you may be in these industries. Uh, consumer and Internet of Things. So as we see more and more devices, especially in the industrial Internet of Things, uh, these devices have microcontrollers and processors. Uh, they need, <clears throat> excuse me, they need, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, they need some amount of uh, processing power. They need like an Ethernet stack. Uh, so they're made with microcontrollers built in, uh, often ARM-based. Uh, we can take advantage of that and we can test those peripherals. Uh, so, for example, a basic Internet of Things device probably has to have some sort of processor core uh, and some sort of network device. Um, what you may be able to do is use your processor core to run a test on your, um, uh, your wireless chip or your Ethernet interface. Uh, medical devices, we see these quite often. Um, industrial devices, uh, we have actually a customer who uh, builds industrial equipment, yep, that I know of that uh, uses this uh, for testing that equipment. Again, any embedded system can benefit from this. Um, so if you have an embedded system, you want to test it, um, <clears throat> you can use this. Uh, farming, uh, I'm pretty sure we are used, I, 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 at least I know the company um, that builds some farm equipment. Um, uses our product to our Scan Express Jet product on some of their equipment. Um, I don't know exactly which of that equipment. And to conclude, I'm actually going to go back to a slide um, and talk about something um, that I didn't have in my slide deck, but that I do want to uh, spend some time on. Uh, but to conclude, uh, we can do at speed non intrusive functional testing. This complements boundary scan testing. Uh, so you can still do your smoke test, your in-system programming, sorry, your um, in-circuit test. Uh, this will complement that in many ways. It's not generally a replacement for it. It can be a replacement for some amount of your functional test, uh, usually. Again, the assumption being if you're building an embedded system, it's going to run some amount of software. Um, we can run tests that are going to be similar what, to what you're going to run later, but they're going to be bare metal. And I want to talk a bit about that advantage. That's actually going to be the next topic that I uh, move to. Uh, but you can take advantage of that bare metal test uh, in addition to your other functional tests. Uh, when we say brings boundary scan to the next level, it's independent of boundary scan in many ways. It's This is not using the IEEE 1149.1 boundary scan features. It's using the IEEE 1149.1 test access port or tap uh, to connect to a CPU to control it. I can get better board test coverage. Maybe you were missing some coverage. One use case that I, I know of from years ago was we had a customer with a, an IDOT MX chip that did not provide boundary scan control of the clock, of uh, the <laughs> clock input to a memory device. This meant they could not run boundary scan memory tests. If you're not familiar, we often run boundary scan memory tests to verify the interface between a CPU, for example, and a memory device is free of open and short defects. Uh, they couldn't run that because they didn't have control of the clock. However, they were able to use Scan Express Jet to run a memory test that was equivalent to what we would have done with boundary scan uh, because we didn't need that boundary scan capability. We just needed the debug capability of that processor. Uh, In-system programming times can be improved. Uh, I know we have a customer who makes um, consumer equipment. Um, they tell me that their uh, production time, any seconds that they can shave off of it are valuable. Um, they are running concurrent tests uh, using our equipment and they do in-system programming. Uh, so we make sure that we optimize it for them. Uh, so it can be an efficient, complete testing and programming solution. I want to go back. Uh, let me see if I can pull up my slide sorter uh, because 
I want to talk a little bit more about peripheral tests. Uh, in fact, I think I have uh, an earlier slide. Let me pull that one up. Uh, this is the one that I wanted. So when we consider this, um, and I didn't focus too much on this during the presentation, uh, and that's why I'm circling back to it. Uh, some of these peripherals, uh, they we know some information about them in addition to uh, not only how does it operate functionally, but in the case of this DDR4 SDRAM that's attached here, uh, we know its package. Uh, when we run a memory test, we are going to use um, walking one and zero patterns in addition to march patterns uh, for testing the internals that will exercise some of those pins. Um, one of our, our newer features uh, is called Jet Advanced Diagnostics. Uh, and we can use that Jet Advanced Diagnostics. What that'll do is it'll take the functional test information. So it'll take information about the results of our memory test. Uh, it will translate that into pin and net level diagnostic information. So for example, if my DDR4 SDRAM, if I have a short defect on uh, data bus pin one, uh, my boundary scan test should say you have a short defect on boundaries on pin one. They will say um, exactly which pin that is. Uh, we also have implemented that for Scan Express Jet now. Uh, that integrates with our Scan Express viewer software. So, for example, um, it will generate diagnostics that can be loaded into Scan Express viewer so that you can see um, where on a board we think the defect is. Uh, this does currently only apply to memory tests. Uh, so if you're interested, you can ask uh, your sales representative about Scan Express Jet Advanced Diagnostics. Um, and I do also recommend, uh, if you want advanced diagnostics for something other than memory, um, talk to your sales representative. They can, uh, they'll, they'll influence engineering and, and uh, we may be able to support you on some other device types. Uh, but for now, it's specifically uh, targeted at uh, memory devices where we, especially in BGA packages, we want to be able to isolate uh, where we think the defect is down to the pin level. Um, and again, if you're familiar with our boundary scan software, and I see some familiar faces um, in the chat or in the, um, the attendee list, uh, you can use that to test those. I believe that will end our presentation, uh, but we're going to have a quick poll uh, before we wrap up. So let me uh, switch to the other one. Okay, it should be launching the poll again. Uh, if you'd like a uh, follow-up from one of our sales representatives, uh, they can schedule <clears throat> they can schedule a session with you to talk about your board, um, or if you'd like a demo, um, we can also uh, do that. Actually, it says you're viewing poll results, not the poll. Uh, Won't let me launch the second poll, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, sorry about that. Uh, but now uh, we can move on to our final part, which is Q&A. So we do have a question uh, in the chat um, asking if we can talk about um, init capture utility. Uh, so yes, we can. Let me pull up a slide so we can talk a little bit about initialization and how we go about getting init scripts. What's the best way for me to do that? Here, I'll, I'll pull up the scripting interface so we can have this as a visual reference. Um, so this question, um, in general, when you want to uh, run Scan Express Jet with a CPU, we have to initialize that CPU. There are different ways to go about getting um, a script that initializes it. Uh, and what do we mean by initialize it? Uh, in general, we're going to have to reset the processor. Uh, we're going to have to tell that processor to initialize its memory interfaces so that we can then use that memory interface for holding our code. Uh, the standard way of getting an init script is uh, you either take our base init script, which is something that we've provided as an example, modify it for your board to tell us, uh, for example, the size of your memory devices so that we can then um, include those in our initialization. Uh, but you can also uh, take advantage of two utilities that are built into Scan Express Jet. Uh, number one is, um, and let me think of, I, I apologize, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on uh, what it's called. It's a register initialization utility. There we go. Uh, the register initialization utility uh, <clears throat> will essentially 
um, read a live board. It will read out registers. It'll determine uh, the state of that board and try to write out an init script for you. Uh, this will work on some boards, uh, but other boards uh, may not, there may not be enough information from that process to be able to initialize the board. Uh, the second method is called the bootloader recorder. In that case, uh, let's say you don't have an init script for your board, but you do have boot code that runs. Uh, we can power cycle the board, and then we will watch over the JTAG port as that CPU executes instructions to initialize the board, and we will copy that into our init script. Uh, actually, there's a, a let's see, that's three ways of getting an init script. Uh, number one, start with our example and modify it. Number two, register initialization utility. Re number three, bootloader recorder. And then number four is if you already have some debug tools. So let's say um, you're, you're looking at implementing Scan Express Jet in a production environment, um, but you also more than likely have some embedded software developers that have some tools already. Maybe they have um, a Lauterbach um, JTAG interface. Uh, if they've already developed in its script to use with Louter Lauterbach, we can convert their script, for example, to our native format. Uh, and then we have a question here. Uh, are there base init scripts for every CPU? Uh, that I'm not sure of. Uh, I can look into that. Uh, there should be base init scripts for um, at least the, the basic cores. Uh, I'm not sure if we provide um, a init script for every possible <clears throat> CPU that we support. Um, I'd probably have to look into that one for you. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is uh, if you do use Scan Express Jet software, uh, you're generally not alone. Uh, we're here to help you get init scripts. Uh, if you can't, if, if we can't generate it for you, uh, we can sometimes uh, figure out ways to convert somebody else's again. Um, the one that I, I've observed recently, I believe, and I, I think uh, it, the, the person asking questions uh, may also be familiar with this one, was the uh, Zinc, uh, where we were working with uh, the Xilinx software uh, which essentially generates an init script, but not in the format that we use. So we were converting it to our format uh, so that we could use it. In general, uh, when you purchase this product, uh, you're going to be very aware uh, of the CPU that you, you have. You're going to be uh, in contact, hopefully, um, because that's what they're there for, in contact with your sales representative to help uh, make sure that we're going to support you, uh, get your system up and running. Uh, so we have a question here, uh, slide 10. Uh, let's pull up slide 10 so we know what we're talking about. I don't know if it's slide 10. Command line interface for using JET. Can you show it? Uh, let me find the slide. I'm not sure if this was what you meant. Um, so I think what you're getting at there is there is an interface um, to the debugger. Here, let me pull up this slide because this is, uh, can be used kind of as an example. Uh, if we see this command interface, uh, there's a command language for Scan Express Jet. Uh, this read PC reg is a command that we can issue. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you're asking about uh, when you say command line interface. Um, there is an API for this software and theoretically, uh, you could, from a command line, for example, if you wanted to integrate with other instruments uh, or other um, control software, uh, you could use our API, call it from the command line, and each of these commands is available as a uh, <clears throat> uh, an option there. Okay, so the question is, what uh, Windows base? The Windows base to use uh, third party. Um, I, so I, I assume you're talking about the, the API uh, to Scan Express Jet uh, when we say that. Um, and then I just got to note that uh, if I'm changing slides, it's not showing the presentation. Um, can you confirm that uh, we should be looking at the Scan Express Jet scripting interface slide? I uh, apologize uh, if that's not showing. Um, it should be sharing my right-hand screen. <clears throat> uh, but so I, I think your question, when you're uh, talking about Windows-based third-party apps, um, 
there is an API for this. You can call it with a command line. Um, I don't believe we offer that natively. Uh, you would be able to, though, write a command line application to wrap it. Um, give me a second. Okay, I see what's going on. You guys are seeing time for a poll, aren't you? Um, I'm not sure why it's not updating. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and then reshare. There we go. It updated that time. Okay. My apologies for that. Uh, this was what I had up earlier when I was talking about the command console. Um, if you're talking about the command console, it's down here. If you're talking about command line interface to Scan Express Jet, um, the command line, um, I, I, again, I don't think we provide a native command line interface, but our API can, can of course, be called by command line applications. And one of the cool things there that was, it's actually a recent feature, is that that command line interface has access to, sorry, that API has access to all of these command functions, like reading the program counter, being able to read memory, read registers. Uh, so hopefully I, I uh, addressed your question. Uh, if not, uh, you can follow up uh, uh, with me later as well. Uh, are there any other questions about this? Um, there, I do want to mention uh, before we wrap up, you should be receiving, uh, I believe usually within the week, a uh, link to the recording. Uh, and I'll also try to make sure that we have a copy of the slide deck in that as well in PDF format. And I believe uh, that will go ahead uh, unless there are any other questions. Uh, so we talked about initialization scripts and uh, APIs. Uh, but if you have any other questions about this, um, now's the time to ask. Uh, otherwise, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, my email address is actually quite easy. I'm bob at corellis.com if you'd like to follow up. Or you can try and use my full last name, uh, bob.dibner at corellis.com. Uh, you can call me in the office <clears throat> uh, if you need to chat. Uh, you can email tech support. Customer support is uh, available uh, to customers with maintenance contracts. Uh, support at Corellis.com if you'd like to talk to a sales representative. Uh, sales, I believe that's a typo. That should be sales at Corellis.com. I can't fix it uh, on the fly, uh, but hopefully, I'm not sure that both of them may go to the same place. Uh, if you'd like to visit our website, www.corellis.com, uh, and we do post the social media, I believe, twice a week. Um, <clears throat> we run these webinars every other month. Uh, if there's a topic that you'd like that we've not covered, uh, we're always looking for uh, more information, so you can go ahead and send me that request. Uh, and if you'd like to sign up for our, uh, it's a 10 hours, two, uh, two hour sessions. Uh, our training class, which covers both Boundary Scan and Scan Express Jet, uh, which includes live demos of using the software, uh, you can go ahead and sign up for that when that goes up. Uh, that should go live uh, soon, if it's not already, uh, for our class next month. Uh, and finally, if you do uh, want on-site training, you can request from our sales team. Uh, if you have a team that you'd like uh, some more detailed training with, uh, let us know. We might be able to provide you some on-site training for that. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I'd like to thank everybody for your time. Uh, again, expect to see an email from us uh, shortly, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks.